Hey guys, today I'm going to show you exactly how I made the perfect RPG cutscene system for my game Reality Box. Dialogue and cutscene systems are a huge part of any story-driven game, but surprisingly, it's also an aspect of game design that is often overlooked and thrown in as an afterthought. My game has changed quite a lot over the course of this year, and I mean a lot. To be honest, I'm still very early on in the planning and design phase, and there are a lot of aspects of the game that I'm still feeling unsure sure about. I mean, a few months ago the game was a 2D platformer with a completely different name, and now it's a top-down RPG. Needless to say, we're still finding the vision. But one thing has been crystal clear to me from the very beginning. The core idea that spawned whatever this game I end up making is its story, and with that I'm gonna need a damn good cutscene system. So I'm gonna show you my whole process on how I prototype a system like this, and hopefully along the way I can teach you some of the steps you'll need to make your own great cutscene system. System. But first, hey, I'm Apox Fox, and I make game design related videos every week. If you learned something new in this video and want to see more, consider subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. Let's jump right in. The first thing I did was create a very minimal UI design for the text box. You don't really need to dive into the art stuff right away, but it is a good idea to have a general concept of how you want your UI to be laid out on screen. For me, there are three key focus points on screen during any dialogue sequence. You have the dialogue box, obviously. This is where the text will display. Then I wanted to add dialogue dialogue portraits so the characters could have different expressions during the scene, and finally the rest of the screen above is dedicated to any action or movement that occurs while the dialogue is happening. For now, this is all just stand-in art to get the system up and running, but we will eventually get to animating all this and making it look more legit. I should also note that before doing anything else, I also wrote down a small design document that has everything I'll need for this system to work. It's definitely smart to write down all your ideas before diving into a big project like this, it'll just give you a better understanding of how to tackle each step going forward. One thing I will always recommend as a huge time saver for any game dev project is to repurpose old code from previous games. I've actually made a ton of simplified dialogue systems in the past, so instead of remaking everything from scratch, I have a very basic starting point to build on. Don't worry though, I'll do my best to explain how all this works, it might get a bit complicated, so I'll try to keep things as simple as possible, but you know, bear with me. There are three main scripts that handle the entire cutscene. The way these three scripts interact with each other is really the key to understanding how this system functions. The first and most baseline script to understand is the dialogue line script. This is a serialized script, so instead of actually putting this on a game object or having to work somewhere in the background, this script is primarily used by other scripts as a variable. The simplest way I can describe it is that a single instance of the dialogue line script is a new line of dialogue. It holds the data for what text should be displayed on screen, you can enter a character's name and portrait to be displayed, and eventually it'll trigger events like characters moving on screen and animations within the scene. More on this later. The next script is the dialogue activator script. This code is for making a list of those dialogue lines and personalizing them to make a cutscene. Believe it or not, it's also what's used to activate a cutscene. The idea is that you put a dialogue activator on a game object within a scene, for example, it could be a character you want to talk to, or a part of the room where a cutscene will take place. Then you fill out all the data that you want to happen within the scene by filling out a list of dialogue lines, and trigger the scene to happen with either a collider trigger or player input. In simpler terms, this script is used to make the entire cutscene, and trigger when it's going to happen. And finally, we have the cutscene system script, which is probably the most complicated of them all. Don't worry though, if you've been following along so far, this shouldn't be too bad. The cutscene system script handles everything that happens within the cutscene. It takes the dialogue lines from the dialogue activator and moves through them one by one based on player input. Unlike the dialogue activator script, there's only one cutscene system script in the entire game, and every time a new dialogue activator is triggered, it collects the cutscene data from the activator and displays it on screen. So as a quick recap, dialogue lines are a single line of dialogue, 
Dialogue Activators hold every single line in a scene and makes a list out of them, and the Cutscene System controls what lines are displayed on screen and when. For some of you, this might be all you need for your dialogue system to work. You can write the dialogue you want, choose what character is speaking, give them a new facial expression. As a baseline, it's pretty versatile. But my goal today isn't just to make a solid dialogue system, I'm trying to make the best cutscene system I possibly can with every option I could ever need for my game. That's what systems are good for. Game dev is very tedious, so in order to avoid doing the same task over and over and over again, you can just build a system that does it for you. You might be front-loading your work at the beginning of your project, but it makes things so much easier later on. Now that we have the basic functions of the system up and running, I decided to spend some more time making art. Not gonna lie, I don't think it's necessary or even a good idea to be making art for incomplete systems like this. I guess it's just how my brain works, and I really like making art, so I did it anyways. I like the idea of having animations for when the characters are talking, so after drawing up some new portraits, I made a bunch of expressions and made their mouths move. Setting up the animator was very simple, and the logic behind this is that the animation only plays when the text is scrolling on screen. I think the result turned out pretty cool. Then I started working on the sprite movement system. I thought this was going to be intimidating since I've never done something like this before, but it was actually surprisingly easy. I made a new serializable script for the actors in the scene, and this script will basically control where a character is at all times, where they should start and end, if they should be the last moving character during that line, and stuff like that. If I ever wanted to add things like sprite emotes and unique animations, this is where they would go. I also made some simple walking animations using blend trees to animate the characters based on the direction they are moving. In code, this movement system works great alongside the dialogue lines. Now we have an option to choose whether a line is a text event or a movement event, and after filling out a few parameters, there's already a lot of flexibility. I do think there's a lot that could be improved here in the future, but since this is only a prototype, I think the system works just fine. And the final big key point I wanted to hit before doing all the fun polish stuff is dialogue trees. If there's one thing this system is sorely missing, it's being interactable for the player, so I got to work on making a system for dialogue options. So here's how it works. If you haven't picked up on it already, the dialogue lines in the activator are kind of our bread and butter for the whole system. When we write out a cutscene, we're making a list of lines, and each line gets assigned a number in our dialogue tree. Right now it's very linear, you start at line one, and every time the player clicks, we move down the list one time. In order to make choices, we need to make things less linear, which means having the option to skip lines entirely. You might think a dialogue tree looks like this, a straight line that splits at certain points and converges later. That makes sense, but that's not actually what's happening behind the scenes. Instead, there's actually one straight line where every point is numbered like before, and the way we navigate different options is by simply skipping ahead. So so if you make a choice on line 3, one option might move you to line 4, but choosing the other would move you to line 7 instead. It's a bit complicated, but it's actually the same logic used in those old choose-your-own-adventure books. Obviously, a book can only have a set number of pages, so the only way to give the player a choice for where the story goes next is to skip forward or backward. Finally, I feel like now I have a strong enough foundation for what this system will be built upon. Now it's time to speedrun some of the fun bonus stuff. First, I added some emotes for portraits to add more life to the screen. I also added a screen shake effect that you can toggle on or off. Then I threw in some sound effects for when the characters are talking. I maybe had a bit too much fun with the sound effects. I also spent some time making a song for this test dialogue system, which you're probably hearing in the background right now, and a bunch of other small polished things that I think go a long way. And without further ado, let's finally take a look at a test run of a full scene. So to set the stage a little bit, our characters just found out that for the next 10 weeks they will be participating in a death game. Grey doesn't believe any of this death game stuff is real, and he won't hear otherwise, while Tallulah is adamant that the death game is in fact real, and that they should start taking things more seriously. We're playing as the protagonist Junebug, and depending on her choices, she'll choose which side she aligns with. Make sense? Alright, enjoy the show.
So there you have it. Our cutscene system is looking pretty good. One more time, let's just do a quick recap so that you guys can try to build this system for yourselves. The cutscene system finds the data from the dialogue activators and displays them on screen. Dialogue activators are a list of dialogue lines that create a cutscene, and dialogue lines can be customized to let you display text, choose character expressions, move sprites across the screen, and give the player decisions that affect the story. If you break your system down into smaller pieces like that, you'll have a damn good cutscene system in no time. A couple closing thoughts, this prototype took about a month and a half to get where we are now, and and there are some things that I would probably change for when I work on the next system. For one, I think things would have probably gone a lot faster if I made stronger deadlines and planned ahead more. There were a lot of moments where I get stuck trying to improve something over and over and over again, only to realize that a week had gone by without making any progress. I also think that starting so early with art is something that won't work for everybody. I realize that I use art as a way to procrastinate on things that I actually should be getting done, so Next time I'll probably save that for the very end. All in all though, I am super proud of the result we landed on and I can't wait to start using this system to build the rest of this story. I'll have more updates on Reality Box sometime in the future, but in the meantime, definitely consider subscribing for more game design videos every week. We also have a Discord server full of cool developers, so if you have any questions or want to join, the link is in the description. I appreciate you guys, go make something cool, see you later, peace.